I'm going to apply that simple inverse filter now in MATLAB to this uh, image, Cameraman. So I'm going to read the image in, convert it to double. This forces it the values to go from 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 255. I'm going to blur it with a Gaussian blur. This is my blurring function, little h here. Um, and I apply the blurring function using IM filter. Then I'm going to take that result and add a little bit of noise to it and show that. Then I'm going to take the Fourier transform of that um, uh, degraded image and show the uh, spectrum of that. And finally, um, take the Fourier transform of my blurring function um, and show the transform of that. So let me go ahead and do this. Okay, so this now um, creates my degraded function. So I'll go ahead and run that. So here is the cameraman um, blurred with a little bit of noise added. Okay, so then I'll show the Fourier transform of that, um, the spectrum of that. And again, we shift it to the center and take the log of the absolute value so that we can see the, the values there. So this is the um, spectrum of this blurred image. As you can see, most of the energy is in the middle here. Um, we then go ahead and um, create a um, uh, let's see here. Oh no, so we're shifting um, we're going to create the a large version of H. So let me show that. And I'm putting it here um, up in the corners. So um, that's what this uh, IFFT shift does. So so again, Fourier transforms. We typically want the um, zero, the center, to be in the corners because everything wraps around like that. So I'm going to take the Fourier transform of that using FFT2 and sh show that in the middle um, of the image by shifting it again, just for visualization. So this is the Fourier transform, capital H, now of my degradation function. So it is it's essentially a Gaussian, but very broad. It's keeping the uh, intensities mostly in the middle here, in the low frequencies, I mean. OK, so now what I want to do is uh, essentially divide this, the Fourier transform of the degraded image, by the Fourier transform of my degradation function. So for every uv in here, I divide this point by this point. And remember, these are complex numbers. But I only want to do that where the values are um, are not too small. So um, I'm going to do this division then, only near the center, and uh, and then I'll convert back to the spatial domain. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, create a for loop. I'm going to go um, from one to the maximum number of columns, and v will go from 1 to the maximum number of rows. And then I'm going to um, divide g by h, and put the result in a um, new function called uh, f. And just to speed things up, I will pre-allocate f um, to be the correct size, which is the size of little f. Um, 
Okay. So, but we only want to do this at small values of u and v. So, what I'm going to do is calculate the um, the actual value of u in relationship to the center. So, du will be u minus the center, which is at um, the the number of columns divided by two, and dv will be um, the value of v minus the center, which is the number of rows divided by 2. So only if the um, sum of the squares, so essentially the distance, is less than some radius, um, that's when I'll do this division. So what's that radius? Let's just pick something, let's say 70. Okay, okay so let me go ahead and run that. Oh, I have to, um, I'll display that result. That will be um, in this form here. So this will I'll display the log of the absolute value of the FFT shift of F. Um, OK, and then finally, I'll go back to the spatial domain by taking the IFFT to, um, I still have to do this shift because um, it's in the wrong uh, place here. Actually, I don't think I need to do this shift. Let me take get rid of that one. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and run that whole thing now. So what do I have here is um, here was that um, the Fourier transform capital G. This is Fourier transform of capital H. Here is um, G divided by H only within this radius of 70. And here is the uh, inverse of this to try to get back to our restored image. So it's actually pretty good um, if you compare it to the blurry function that we started off with. Although there is some noise that that um, appeared to happen in the background. So you, know, you can play with this value like I'll, I'll, I'll try for example um, I don't know 90 let's say. So 90 is too big as you can see. Um, let's try 80. 80 is not too bad. Still had quite a bit of noise there. Go back down to 60. And, and this starts to look really good. Um, we don't have much of this problem in the background, but it's still a pretty sharp image.